What is up guys, Rambling Collector back here again with another book ramble for all of you, and today I'm going to be covering the horror anthology Wicked Appalachia by Tony Evans. Now the funny thing is I haven't read a lot of horror stories, not since back in middle school when I used to read Goosebumps, like a man possessed. And since then I have not touched horror as of late, mostly because of the fact that a lot of horror stuff that I have seen has dealt with demonic possession. Which is something I normally do not touch with a 39 and a half foot pole, to be quite honest with you guys, because let's face it, I am not a fan of horrors or demons or things of that nature. Anyways, let's get on with the book now, shall we? So, first fun fact about this book all of these horror stories that take place in this collection all take place within one particular area, Eastern Kentucky. Which to me, that caught me a little bit off guard, because I'm used to stuff taking place in like either a horror sci-fi or something like that, but never have I read anything that concerns Eastern Kentucky. But anyways, so I actually borrowed this book from a friend of mine, a friend of my little brother's I should say, he actually recommended this to me and I thought I'd give it a try because I had not read any horror since George R. Martin's Meat House Man, Sand Kings, and all of that, but that was part of a collection of other stories in Dream Songs Volume 1. For those of you who have not seen that video yet, feel free to go check it out after this one. But anyways, to put it simply, for the first dive back into horror since then, I kind of found it Wicked Appalachia lacking in a way. Now don't get me wrong, it does have some interesting twists and turns here and there, but the problem was that with each story it felt way too short, so there wasn't really a lot of time for me to get connected to a lot of the characters or feel that suspense with horror. I don't know, it just wasn't ringing with me. Granted, out of this whole collection, which equals up to about 136 pages in paper, at the very least there were only two stories that stuck out to me, which I will cover later on in the video. But overall, the book left me feeling like I was missing something. At the time, I was just passively reading it. Not to say it didn't grab my attention in some cases, but at the time, it just felt like I was just going through the motions. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Like, it's not bad, but it was not great either. All in all, I would like to see more from this guy. But at the same time, these stories were way too short for my liking. But, if you all are still here, I'd like to go over two of the short stories that actually stuck out to me. Now, if you wish to avoid spoilers, feel free to skip to the end of the video now. But I'm also entitled to warn you guys, these stories are not for the faint of heart for those who cannot deal with demons, devils, or very dark materials. So if you've not skipped to the end of the video, let's go ahead and get started with the first one, shall we? So first off, we have Your Notches Are Like My Tattoos. And believe me, when I first read the title, I was thinking the same thing. What the hell? What title is this? But it does get explained further through the story. So the main premise of the story is it revolves around two guys who are out just getting drunk on Halloween looking for a good screw. However, what really made me start to turn my head and go, excuse me? was when I saw these two guys essentially planning to use date rape drugs by drugging the girl's drink and then just going to town on them. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Well, I'm not going to feel bad for these two rapists. Not at all. Because if there's one thing that you guys should know about me is that I despise three things. Rapists, pedophiles, and more importantly, abusers. And rapists, being the main characters here, definitely made me feel more satisfied with their fates in a very grim, sadistic manner. But in all honesty though, so the main premise of it is that they see this newcomer girl comes in, long dark hair, and tattoos all over her, right? So this guy, he's ramping up his 
score essentially like he says that he puts notches into the bed with how many girls he sleeps with i'm like are you kidding me this dude keeps a score so he goes up to this woman putting in the drug in her drink and plans to talk with her he gets to know her finds out that her name is lucy but throughout the story we keep on hearing of how these old legends of how demons or witches or sirens inhabit the woods and could possibly be well there they could actually exist they just kind of laugh it off at first but the more this guy gets to know the girl with the fact of how her eyes seem hypnotic and how the tattoos just seem to glisten all over her the more he starts to feel like there's something off here especially with the fact that he starts noticing that the drug that he put in her drink is not having any effect on her whatsoever but at one point he blacks out and then it is revealed that this girl that he was interacting with lucy was actually short for another name and throughout this whole story it is revealed that she only comes out one night a year because of her father now for those of you who have already connected the dots yeah you figured it out essentially this guy just got tracked down by lucifer disguised as a woman being sent out by god to punish people like our main character who are rapists and all other manner of criminals sick twisted human beings and to be honest with you guys i did not feel bad for the main character here i did not in fact i felt a grim satisfaction to him getting his comeuppance for all the crimes and rapes that he did so to me that was grimly satisfying but all in all this story was very short and it's one of the few that actually did catch my attention there were others though which is why i'm moving on to number two which frankly was a lot more morose and far more sad especially with the twist at the end so let's move on to that one shall we the second story the schoolhouse inn i gotta tell you guys throughout my entire experience reading this little short story i kept on wondering where was the twist what was the twist like it kept me questioning everything as i kept reading it and it actually kept me a little bit on my toes with wondering how things were going to play out because i did not know what to expect and the twist ending really caught me off guard and it left me going well dang i think i might need a few minutes here it left me shocked as a matter of fact so the story opens up on a single man who seems like he's out on a business trip calling his wife and saying hey i'm probably going to be home late again to which his wife is not happy about this instead if he does not get his act together she and their daughters will be gone and apparently the man lives all the way in florida and yet somehow he has found his way to eastern kentucky which amazes me but what the hell so throughout this story he keeps on mentioning pills i keep on wondering what's going on here why does this guy need pills for why does he seem so on edge so we see him finding this old hotel that was reformatted from an old schoolhouse that was shut down but has not been torn down so he checks into this hotel goes to the room but from there he starts hallucinating seeing spirits all over the place especially of young girls and even hearing his wife's voice in his head throughout it all we see how this guy is just starting to spiral further and further but the shock at the end is what really got to me especially when he starts hearing the voices of his daughters and his wife in his head and actually seeing visit he starts seeing illusions of them surrounding him as a matter of fact like they are all in this hotel room begging him to join them begging him to come home and to me i was wondering wait what's going on here i found myself like on the edge of my seat actually wanting to see what the heck happens here and in the end it is revealed from the two ladies well actually as a matter of fact it is revealed from only one clerk because this man was hallucinating so much that he saw two when in reality there was only one woman there and it is actually revealed by the end of it after this man has hung himself after listening to the illusions of his or the hallucinations of his now dead wife and children and it is actually revealed that the man has been coming back to that same room 
for years now at this rate. He moved to Florida at one point, but he kept coming back to the same schoolhouse inn because apparently it was where his wife, children, and one of the hotel staff was murdered in a shooting. And it is revealed that he has been on antipsychotic drugs to supposedly deal with the survivor's guilt or the hallucinations that he thinks they are alive and telling him to come home. And to me, that was just a severe twist ending that I actually did not expect. This one was more of a psychological horror, in my personal opinion. It left me on the edge of my seat and wondering, what is going on here? It left me questioning it. it I could not fill in the gaps until like the very end. And afterwards, I had to take a couple minutes just to process what the hell I just read. This one definitely stood out among the collection for what it was. Now, there are a few others, but I wanted to at least stick out with the two that really caught my eye as I was reading through this whole story. But, if you all can guess from my general attitude, I can tell you right now that these are the only two out of a few that caught my attention. But, let's move on to the score. So overall, I would give Wicked Appalachia a good 5 out of 10. Not a terrible book, but not a fantastic one either. All in all, I would say it was, an, it was okay vibe, is the way I'd put it. Nothing too fancy, probably good for at least some light reading, like if you have a few hours to spare. Especially for all of you horror fans out there who either have or have not read a horror anthology collection. And if you're just a horror fan in general, this might be something to pick up if you are interested. Overall, though, this one did not impress me. Who knows, though? This might actually inspire me to pick up more horror films or, like, at the very least, horror novels, at the very least. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see when I can get to them and then do a review for you all. I love hearing suggestions. And if you have anything better than Wicked Appalachia, I would love to hear it, and I'd like to check it out whenever I have the time. And it will be in my to-be-read pile as soon as I can, and I will make sure to check it out, and I promise you all that. Overall, I think at some point I want to do a Goosebumps review, or at least just rattle on about my days when I was absolutely obsessed with it. If you guys want to hear that as well, please let me also know that in the comment section down below as well. Now, if you guys have stuck to the end of this video, I thank you so much for listening to this crazy man's ramblings, and just, if you are fellow readers like me, I appreciate the support. If you did like this video, please feel free to leave a like, or comment down below, or subscribe if you're interested in more of what I have to say. Anyways, thank you all again for listening. This is Rambling Collector, signing off. Have an awesome day.